Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on one of the specific functions of an HTX powered radio. It's aimed at those of you that are relatively new to HTX, might be coming to HTX from FreeSky, Fataba, Spectrum, or maybe you're brand new to the hobby. Now there are links below to the rest of the videos in the series, as well as more advanced stuff as well. Don't forget you can find content by just looking for the thing you're interested in and adding Painless360 to your search term here on YouTube. So let's jump on the bench and let's talk about the topic for today. This time it's talking about how you navigate around your color HTX radio. Now this is a Radio Master TX16S. A lot of the color radios follow a similar form factor. And the cool thing is, is not only does it have a very big, large color screen, but this screen is also touch capable as well. And that gives us some extra abilities in terms of navigating around stuff. Now, in terms of the radio, you can think of it as kind of laid out in almost three sections. The top section here, are all the switches and controls that you can add to channels to do things like control landing gear or flaps or if it's a flight controller modes and arming and things like that. The second part are then the main flight controls that you would use. This is a mode 2 radio so my unsprung throttle is here on the left hand side with a rudder. We have aileron and elevator as well and we have the associated trims that go along with those controls. We have additional auxiliary trims as well on this radio, which can be assigned to other controls if you really want to. And then here at the bottom from here down, it's all about managing the menus and doing those kind of things. So let's just turn on the radio. And now it's all turned on, then we have the basic default screen. This is what it looks like if you haven't customized the screen and we'll talk about some of that stuff in a minute. But again, watch the entire series. It's gonna explain, once I've explained how to navigate around the radio, how you set things up. The big two things that you'll notice is there's a model and a system button. These are the two different main menus that you have on all Edge TX powered radios. The model menu, if you press it, is specific to the model that I'm running right now, whether it's a quadcopter, a plane, a wing, a glider, whatever it is I have set up. All of these settings relate just to this specific model, how uh, the name of it, how I've got it set up, the inputs I'm using, the mixes, the outputs, whether or not I have things like curves, logical switches, special functions, telemetry, custom scripts, everything is in this list. And as you saw there, I can navigate by touching the screen. The buttons, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. The buttons around the outside um, are used to then do a lot of the navigation if your radio doesn't have a touch screen or you've disabled that feature. But some people don't like the touch screen. I understand that. So here on the right hand side, we have a scroll wheel for changing the values of things. You can also press that to enter um, a particular value. It also brings up this menu. And here on the left hand side, we have four buttons on this radio, but it could be three because the top one is kind of a exit button. And that's a really, really handy button. If you're ever confused where you are, pressing and pressing and holding that will usually get you back to this screen, which is kind of where you start. Then you have a backwards and forwards button. So for example, if we're in the model menu, I can navigate through each of these tabs by pressing the button that'll take us one way, pressing the other button will take us the other way. Be aware, however, that on some radios, there's only three buttons. So some of the jumper ones that you may see only have three. If it only has three, then pressing holding the navigation button will take you backwards. Pressing it briefly, it will take you forwards. Again, if we're not sure where we are and we're a bit lost, if we just press the exit key, that'll take us back to the main screen. The final button here on the left-hand side takes us into the telemetry screens and it will take us here to set those up because I don't have any set, but let's just very quickly set one up. So we'll change the layout, we'll have the full screen and we'll set the full screen up as something like, uh, let's see if we've got the outputs. There we go, outputs. Now don't worry too much about what I did there because we'll cover it in the series. But now that means that on this main screen, I can see all of my controls moving. And as I scroll through, let me come out of there again, remember, escape or exit is your best friend. It'll actually 
take you through each of them. And you can have multiple of these set up and you tab through them through this bottom button. So it might be that on the first screen, you have all this stuff or your first screen, you have things like a picture of your model, the name of the model, your timer, which is gonna be more typical. Maybe the next screen you set up is gonna be something like your outputs, so you can check everything is working okay. Now that we've added that to our main screen, that's where we're always gonna come back to. So if I want to go into the system menu, I press the system button, and then we're into the system menu, we can navigate each of the menu pieces using the buttons, or I can just use my fingertip and click on the piece that I'm interested in. Again, if we have had enough of that, we can just press the escape key. It'll take us back to the main first screen. If I want to go into the model menu, which is where you're gonna spend most of your time, maybe you want to change the name of the model to be something else, then that's how we would do that. There's one other thing that you may have spotted. When I touch the screen and there's nothing else on it, I get this kind of shortcut menu. And again, we'll exit out of that if we don't want it. Again, pressing the enter key with nothing selected is going to bring up the same thing. This is a great little shortcut if you want to manage your models. It will bring up all the models that you have on the radio and you can group them so that, you know, if you want to just have the ones that you use all the time, you can have them all listed in a cute place. Again, how do you think we get out of that? Yep, exit. If we just click the enter key again, we can also have a channel monitor, which is kind of what we had before, but a slightly more sophisticated version with inputs and, and the outputs of the mixers. Again, we'll exit out of that. If we click it another time, then we also, have things like the model settings, radio settings, which are basically the same thing as pressing these buttons, screen settings, reset the telemetry, statistics, and about STX. So that is a very whistle-stop tour. It isn't too tricky. The vast majority of the time, you're going to be in things like the model select. The big thing that I get asked a lot when people start out is how do I change my model? This is the one I'm using now, but I've set up a model for another plane, quad, whatever it is. The way you do it is I just press the enter key, go into manage models, and then scroll around to find the model that I'm interested in, select it, press and hold it, and say select model. And now we have that model selected. And fully enough, I've got the same screen set up on here as I had before. But now if we go into the model menu, you'll see that I'm now running the Recon 7 Pro model and that will be ready to use with that particular quad. So that's the whistle stop tour, not too tricky. The only other things are, there's a couple of extra ports. These tend to be specific to the radio that you have. There's usually a USB connection at the top that's so you can plug it into your computer so you can copy files to and from your radio and back it up there is a port here for uh, the trainer so you can connect it via the trainer port at the bottom you'll find that there's usually additional connections under this little strap if I can get that out of the way uh, that's the SD card and then that's the USB connector for doing things like charging the battery and stuff as well depends on the radio depends on exactly how everything works but check the manual for the one that you have but hopefully now you've got a rough idea of how you navigate around how easy it is to get in and out of things like the models and the most important key of the entire thing which is the exit key getting that one will always get you back to the first screen if you get lost in the weeds and that can happen in the first couple of days when you're playing around with HTX. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.